today cancer free because of the prayers of the people you know sometimes you can't even pray for yourself but those people that maybe you just meet once and they, they I stuck in your mind I don't know but if you said a prayer for me I want to thank you there were many many days that this song carried me through hope you enjoy it today.
you guys who are we are real quick. We've been here two or three times. You guys already know who we are. If y'all's with us, stand up right quick. Stand up, please. I do not brag on these guys near as much as I should. Everybody that goes with us does a lot more than what you see up here on stage. They, they had to get up at, what, 4 o'clock this morning to get in here. And they give so much above and beyond what you guys actually see here. Um, we started, we left at 7, was it 7 o'clock this morning? Seven. <laughs> that's that's early for me, y'all. I don't know about y'all. Seven o'clock stinks for me, y'all. I don't, I don't <laughs> think seven o'clock. But they these guys, I want them to know how much I love and appreciate them. And there's uh, there's uh, two that's not with us today, too. So actually, actually three, since because uh, yeah. sis is not with us, is she? So actually, there's three that's not with us. But I just want you guys to to know how much that I love you and I appreciate you. You guys will never know how much. This is this is Chris Williams. This is his wife Wendy. They run the sound for us. Their son Seth plays the lead for us. He he had to work this morning. He had to, you, if you got to provide for your family, you got to provide for your family. You know what I mean? So he had to work this morning. I miss him. I'm telling y'all, it's like my right arm to come this morning, y'all. So so uh, y'all y'all be praying for me. But his his name is Seth. Uh, this is Bill. His name's Bill Stephen. Talking today talk or no? Today, buddy boy. You know how dangerous it is to give him a mic. Huh? He can't see him. He's saving his voice today. Oh, Y'all are lucky. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. That's him and Jan have been with us. Him and Jan have been with us since we since we started the whole thing. And and uh, like I said, they do so much stuff that nobody else sees. But uh, the one that counts sees it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So his name is Bill, and he's the he's the kind of the comedian of the group. And this is his wife back here, and she does alto. Uh, she does uh, some lead singing, and uh, I, they will never know how much that I f appreciate and love them. They'll never know. So her name is Jan. Thank you all for having us. Appreciate it. <laughs> the newbie. <laughs> he kind he looked kind of pretty though, don't he? And he's got on. His Got him on a little bit. Ball. He needs to do something with his hair. He needs to put it in a ponytail. His tie matches his vest. Your it tie does. matches your vest. <laughs> it does. Oh, he's back there showing off. So. <laughs> Appreciate him. That is Mr. I, I've known this guy since, well, since I had hair. He's, he's still got quite a bit of hair, but <laughs> I've known him for a long time, y'all. We kind of grew, <laughs> we grew up together, hadn't we? we probably, I probably knew him since I was, I was probably five or six years old, and, uh, and I called him the other day and said, hey, I, I need, I'm in a bad need. And he said, I'll go with you. So he's, he just started tagging along with us. We appreciate him. That's Mr. Terry Qualls. And his wife? Crystal. Crystal, yeah, Crystal. She's not with us this morning, but uh, that's his better half. This is my, like I said last time I was here, this is my my worm my worm drowning buddy right here we we drown a lot we go a lot of fishing well we ain't really really, really went all that much this year have we no nope, ain't had a chance well we probably had a chance but we didn't want to get <laughs> well i've had a chance i just didn't want to get out of the air conditioning <laughs> but we uh we drown a lot of worms together we don't do we, we go fishing but we don't catch a lot of fish we drown a lot of worms burn a lot of wood up though and uh, he plays the steel force and that's mr rick perkins and that's his, that's his beautiful lady right there. Her name is Pam McGrew. And the, I, the reason I introduced them, y'all, is because they support what these guys do up here. If they didn't support what they did, they probably wouldn't go with us. And uh, sometimes we just need a, a friendly fight. Like he said a while ago, he said, I don't want this to, well, how'd you put that? I don't want them to think they're singing to the what? Frigidaire? <laughs> Sometimes, y'all, you get in one of them churches. Yeah. <laughs> I sang there too, brother. So everybody ain't always smiling like they are here. But so if we need a friendly face to look at, and sometimes when you get up here and you're and you're trying to minister and everything, and everybody's sitting out there like this, then you need a friendly face to look at. So right there, those those are the friendly faces that we appreciate them so much. Her name's Pamela Green. That's, and that's up to you. Oh, you don't you didn't give away it though, didn't you? You should. She gave away. I was gonna introduce. I was gonna let her know that. Well, I'm gonna say it anyway. Everywhere that we went, 
whenever she we were going through cancer, and I say, I say we were going through cancer because when she went through it, I went through it too, y'all. So everywhere we went, we said, pray for us. Pray for us. Call her name out. Don't just pray for her. Call her name out. They told us that whenever she started chemo that she would probably lose all of her hair. She would probably be in bed one week out of the two in between. They was going to give it to her every two weeks. And one of the one of the weeks that she would probably be in the bed all the time. Uh, she would probably be uh, sick at her stomach all the time, throwing up all the time. And just because they say that does not mean that that's what's going to happen. She didn't go through any of those things, y'all. And they will never convince me that the reason that she didn't go through that is because we had God's children out there praying, Amen. Lord, take keep your hand Amen. upon her. Right. Keep her safe, Lord. Amen. Make it to where she don't get sick. They'll never make me to believe that because she didn't. She missed. Uh, she missed a few days of work, but it was because um, going to the appointment and getting the chemo. So I want you guys to know something. If the doctor says it, that don't always make it true. This little lady right here, she's got a testimony about Bill, and if they, if she would have buried him every time the doctor said, that'd have been in China right now. <laughs> That's it. That's right. But just because the doc said, and and, and one of the one of the are the best testimonies that, that I have ever heard in my life is whenever the doctor was giving her a bleak out, and she said, I don't accept it. I don't, I don't accept that. I don't have to accept it. Today, you as a Christian, you don't have to accept the garbage that everybody says out there because we've got a way out, y'all, and his name is Jesus. We know the master healer, Tony. Yes, That's it. We do. And I get the privilege. This is my wife. Her name is... <laughs> I'm talking right now. <laughs> her name is Misty. I call I call her Boondocker because that's where I found her at in the Boondocks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Boondocks. You were going to get a nice introduction. Yeah. Sorry. That <laughs> that's that's Tony. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you get. <laughs> Tony is also, Tony's also known as Jerry Lee Ruckman. <laughs> He's got me tickled. I know. <laughs> Tony has been singing and playing Southern gospel music for most of his <coughs> almost 60 years. Yeah, I'm coming in February, and uh, fixing to kick it down. Right there. <laughs> I'm not just pushing; I'm fixing to kick Don't it over. <laughs> God has anointed him with his playing and his singing, and we just appreciate what God has done through his life, and that God still allows us, even though we go through valleys and trials on our own. Um, sometimes we have to go through those valleys. You know, it's real easy being up on top of the mountain and everything looks great. You can see, you can see forever. But sometimes when you're down in those valleys, that's where you find the nice green plush grass at. And that's where you can, you get filled up because we tend to rely more on this when we're going through our valleys, right? I know in my lifetime, I've gone, this is where I run. The Bible says to hide thy word in your heart. And, you know, if we, if we depend on what is in here, we're good. Because what the world tells us, most of it comes lies from Satan. But if we will just trust in what is in here. This word says that my God came to heal. Satan comes to steal and destroy. God gave us life. We're getting ready to sing a song called Where We'll Never Die. I want y'all to listen to the words of this song. I told Misty, I said, I want this song sung at my funeral because one of these days, my grandmother died on December the 24th, 1999, and I miss her every single day. But she went to a place to where she will never die. Y'all listen to the words of this song.
Um, I, I made a mistake with the book. I, I, Jan wasn't able to go with us last week because she was <coughs> under the weather. Is there a Christian in the house? And this is the one I wanted to stop. No, it, it's got to be that one. Hey, can you give my old one? <coughs> Where's my old one? Tony's having issues. Anyway, um, I took this out because I couldn't pull it off um, last week without my sister because she does the lead on this song. This is a Karen Peck song, and we love Karen Peck. I prayed that after I had my thyroid removed that they would, um, it would make me sound like her. <laughs> It didn't happen. <laughs> but, you know, God doesn't always give us what we ask for. He gives us what we need. And <laughs> yeah, Tony said he'd have his adenoids removed if that would happen. But, um, you know, God is good. And he gives us people in our lives that we need. And um, so this song, Is There a Christian in the House? And sometimes... <laughs> We need to look to our Christian friends and not to our worldly friends because you know we've all got them. Those worldly friends, they're going to discourage you. They're going to be the judgmental kind. They're going to try to get you to go their way and not the way of God. But if we have Christian friends, <coughs> if we have Christian friends and if we follow them and we follow the Lord, we're never going to go wrong. So this song is called Christian in the House. Oh, we forgot to introduce our drummer. <coughs> this little guy's name is Boss. He thinks he's the boss. Tony's the boss. Tony has to, Tony has to sing, play piano, run the drummer thing, and he he has a lot of jobs. E. All right, let's do this song. I have to apologize, guys. I've been battling a bad throat, so hopefully this. Lord will help us get through this, but I love it. How many Christians are in the house? Let's see a hand. Oh, come on now. I know there's, there we go. Now we're talking. Now I can sing this song. Thank you. <laughs> well, when I'm down.
bunch of Christians here. That's why we love to come here so much. We're going to do a song called I'll Take Jesus. And you know, I have been to a lot of funerals. And uh, probably way more than I should at my age. <clears throat> but the one thing that I've never seen at a funeral is a U-Haul behind the hearse. Yeah. Nope. I've never seen that happen. Because what we have on this earth is not important. The only thing important is the relationship that we have with Jesus Christ. And, you know, sometimes we need to learn from what other people have done. And, and there's this book is filled with stories of people who did right. It's also filled with stories of people did, that did wrong so that we can learn from them. I hope you enjoy this song. today, right? Amen. We're blessed. The song Jan's getting ready to sing next is called Who Touched Me? And it's a song about the woman with the issue of blood. You know, she had gone many, many years and she had seen every doctor and she had, she had talked to everybody that she thought could help her. And when her money had run out, she knew that if she could touch the hem of Jesus' garment that she would be made whole. Now, I don't know about y'all. How many of you Black Friday shop? 
I can just imagine when they, when you heard that Jesus was coming, that it would be kind of like Black Friday shopping. You know, when you're reaching for those towels and everybody's fighting over them because they're like 99 cents or whatever. Can you imagine if I made an announcement today that Jesus was going to be walking down the street right in front of us? Can you imagine the fight it would be just to get close to him because just because of who he is? And you know, I can only imagine her struggling and getting down on the ground and just crawling between feet and legs and just reaching out, knowing that if she could just touch the hem of her garment, that she would be whole. And the moment that she touched him with the crowd all around him, he knew that he had been touched by a woman who had faith. And he turned and he said, who touched me? And then he says, your faith has made you whole. Isn't that incredible? And that same God, that same Jesus is in the miracle working business today. And although we can't just reach out and physically touch him, we can reach out and touch him. He is as close as the mention of his name. He never will leave you. He will never forsake you. He will never let you just wander in the wilderness. He is as close as the mention of his name. And if you will just touch him, he will make you whole. Jan, sing this beautiful song. She had suffered many years. She had cried so many tears. In her heart, her hope was all.
We're going to read from the book of Luke, chapter 2. Wendy, can you come on up here? had to borrow a pastor's Bible, and I'm really glad it has big print. The only problem with the old ones is sometimes it comes off in my ear. So I had one that come off in my ear the other day, and I told Misty, I said, hey, that, that piece has come off in my ear. And she said, she said, let me see it. So she looked down there, and she said, there's nothing in your ear. And I said, yeah, it's, it's in there. I trust me, it's in there. So she got to looking, and we couldn't we couldn't get, she couldn't see. She said, I can't see it. And I said, well, I'm telling you right now, it's down in there. And then there was some old dude back there in the back, and he goes, hey, just get in the other ear and blow. <laughs> 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 I wanted to go back there and tackle him, but I was afraid. You know how them old dudes, some of them are pretty tough, so I didn't take no <laughs> chance on it. But anyway, if this comes off in my ear, y'all, just want y'all to know, if you see me digging in my ears, because something's come off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And we got him new ones, and uh, they didn't work very good. Need me to blow? <laughs> you tell me I'm full of hot air, so. If you can't tell, we have lots of fun up here. <laughs> <coughs> yes, yeah, usually at Tony's expense. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Don't surprise me none. I was going to point out his new shoes to him. I might as well take this opportunity. I don't know if y'all can see him or not. But we've been singing for, what, six years, and he's wore the same shoes. And they were pretty well born, born, tore up on the bottom, flipping on the back part of them like this all the, the time. Whole heel. We could have made it an instrument. Yeah, it and then all a of a rhythm. sudden he shows up, what, a few few weeks ago. Did you go buy his shoes for him? I did. You did. That's why I wouldn't do shoes. I drug him so to the shoe store. It helps him play keyboard a whole lot better with those new shoes. I'm just <laughs> saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to read from the book of Luke chapter 2 verses 1 through 3. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made to Serenius who was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. I know you guys know these songs. You sang along with us, okay?
And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. because there was no room for them.
2, 8 through 10 says, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about him, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto him, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be for all people. C chord. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. There we go. Now y'all all can hit this one. Y'all know the sound. <laughs> David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with an angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Last week, Jen, I'm just gonna warn you. Okay, it's gonna be fast. Joy. 
seen them this up here coughing and everything. I like it, Pat, don't y'all? <laughs> Pastor, do you want to say something? We've got about two more songs. Did you want Hey, as you're standing, we're going to ask our ushers to come forward. We're going to give our uh, we're going to give our tithes and offerings. If you have something and it is directed all to the uh, unless it's directed tithes and offerings, we want to give them a good a good offering this morning. Come on up here, guys. And so, uh, hey, let's give let's give them a big hand. Let's give them a good hand. It's good to see. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. We're, we're just going to let y'all, y'all just close it off, altar service, you handle it. And so let's just, let's just lift our hands before we ask the blessing, Father. Father God, we come to you today, Lord. We just pray God just touch us in this place. God, continue. Father, we thank you for your touch here this morning upon our singers, our musicians, and each one. And Lord, we just ask you to bless this offering, these tithes and offerings. In Jesus' precious name, and everybody says, amen. I have to have a quick apology to everybody. Before we came to sing tonight, Kermit the Frog decided to get in my throat. (laughs) And sometimes you can't get him out in time to come sing, so y'all have to forgive me today for this. But we're here to just worship the Lord and hope you've enjoyed that. We've enjoyed being with you all so much. No, not not yet. Give me a second. Luke 2, 15 through 21. And it came to pass that the angels were gone away from them into heaven, and the shepherds said one to another, Let us go now, even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. And they came with haste and and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was concerned which told to them concerning this child. And all that they that heard it wondered at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying God and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, and it was told unto them. And when the eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus.
love to give Tony a hard time. Doesn't he do a great job on keyboard over <laughs> here? <laughs> and our steel guitar player. And our guitar player back here. We're glad to have all of them for sure. And our little drummer that's in the box that nobody can see. <laughs> you know, I've, I'm, I'm about done with my Christmas shopping. And last night I was sitting there and wrapping some of the gifts up. You know, I'm trying not to like wait to the last minute this year. And I was taking care and you know, make sure the seams are all perfect and they're folded just right. And when I got done, I arranged them around the tree, grouped by family or event or whatever. And I did everything I could to make the presents around the tree look great. Because I went out and shopped and I picked things that I thought that that person would really appreciate and like, and it came from my heart, you know. I put a lot of thought into it. But you know, God did the same thing. And He created this perfect gift. And He sent Jesus to become born of a virgin Mary in a barn. And that child walked the earth just like you and I, faced the temptations that we face. But he came for one purpose. See, he didn't have to come. But God sent him as a gift. The one thing about the gifts that I wrapped up, I can tell you that if one of our kids said, well, you just wasted your time and money, that's stupid. That would crush my heart. Because although we may not have much money, every gift we give is given with love. Can you imagine what the creator of the world would feel to have sent his son to die on a cross for the atonement of our sins? And for people to just say, that's stupid, I don't need it. What heartbreak would that be? What would that be like? Just to have your gift completely rejected by the ones that you gave it to. See, he didn't have to. One drop of Jesus' blood would have been enough to cover all of our sins. But he gave the ultimate sacrifice. He came. He lived. And he died for you. If you had been the only one on this world, on this earth, he would have died for you. You know, it doesn't matter how many years you've been a deacon or how many years you've taught Sunday school or maybe you're a preacher. It doesn't matter what you've done in this life. If you haven't got a relationship with Jesus Christ, the future for you is really bleak. You know, Jesus is getting ready to come back. And I've heard that ever since I was a little girl. Tony and I both joke, we got a drug problem. We were drugged to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night and any other time the doors were open. But because of that training, I've heard all my life that Jesus is coming back. In 1999, there were 99 reasons Jesus was coming in 99. The Bible says that no man know the day or the hour. But I'm telling you from what little news I watch, and I don't watch the news, I... I I don't think they actually tell you anything that's true anyway. I depend on the Word of God. And the things that are written in that book, especially in Revelation, are happening right now. The temple could be rebuilt in 24 hours. Israel is under attack. And I'm telling you right now, no matter what, our, and I'm not politician, I'm not a politician. I'm a teacher. And I teach kids how to cook and sew. So. But our government better support Israel. 
And if we don't, we're going the wrong way. Jesus could come back any day. The Bible says that when he comes back, the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Wouldn't you like to be near a cemetery when the rapture happens? Talk about exciting. The other day, well, I ain't going to tell that story. Tony was in the shower. It probably wouldn't be a good story. He thought he got left behind. Let's just say that. He was hollering for me and I wasn't answering and he thought did the rapture he told me he said I thought maybe the rapture happened and I got left although that's funny it's not the Bible says the dead in Christ are going to rise first that means all of those who had accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior and who had lived a fruitful life for him be called up and then we who are alive and remain that means you and me will be caught up together with him in the clouds. The Bible also says that everyone will face judgment. It says that every knee shall bow. The, the toughest, meanest, baddest atheist is going to bow at the feet of Jesus. Those who are not saved will hear, depart from me, I never knew you. And those who are saved will hear, enter into the kingdom I lost we had a student at our school he graduated in May of 23 with my son he was a very good friend of my son and Hayden was just an incredible child when he turned 16 his biggest thing to be excited about was the fact that he was going to get to give his friends rides to church I have seen pictures of him arms outstretched just worshiping God never heard a foul word come out of his mouth and yet he got in the car one day to go run an errand for a family down the road and he came over a hill and hit a tree that had fallen in the road old county road nobody knew it had happened it had just happened apparently hit that tree and died two days later of his injuries I spoke with his dad dad's name is Bill I said how you doing Bill and he said I'm blessed we were getting ready to go to the funeral home to see his child in a casket and his answer to me was I am blessed I don't know about you but it would be really hard for me knowing my child would never sit at my dinner table again I would never have another hug or kiss or and I love you mom or dad to say that I am blessed but he went on to say that just in the short time that Hayden had died he had found out how many lives that child had touched and how many people he had impacted for the cause of Christ We don't know when we're going to face judgment. We don't know when our last day on this earth is going to be. It happens just like that. I want to ask you a question. I want you to think about it real hard. If you died right now, where would you spend eternity? Would you hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant, or would you hear, depart from me? If your answer to that is hell, I would hear, depart from me. You and I need to talk. If your answer is, I really don't know, I'm not sure, you and I need to talk. And you don't have to just talk to me. Brother Bullard is ready, willing, and able to lead you to the Lord. If you have questions about whether you're saved or not, there is no better time than right now fix that see lots of people make getting saved really hard well we have to do these things no you don't I'm going to tell you what you got to do Amen. you got to admit that you're a sinner you've got to confess with your mouth that you've made a mistake 
that you've messed up. Well, I ain't murdered nobody, or I, I, I really don't do nothing bad. No, but you need Jesus to come into your heart. You need to confess with your mouth that you believe that God sent his son to die on a cross for your sin and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You need to ask him to forgive you of those sins. It's that easy. I grew up in a little assembly of God church. Probably this half would make up the church. And every Sunday, the booster band would get up there. It was all of us little ones. And we would sing a song. Into my heart. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Lord Jesus, come in today, come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. And I will tell you, I started singing that song about the time I could talk. But one day, as we knelt at the altar, an altar that looked an awful lot like this one, Pastor Lori, I sang that song, and it meant something different. I was about seven. And I got up from that altar, and something was different. You see, I meant what I sang. I knew that God had sent his son to die for me. And I knew that I wanted to spend an eternity with him. I got saved that morning. Singing a simple little song. Because I confessed with my mouth that I was a sinner. And I believed in my heart that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. See, we're getting ready to hear the trumpet sound. We're going to do a song called The Midnight Cry. I want you to ask yourself, if the rapture happened today, what would happen to you? And if you don't know the answer or the answer to that question isn't, I would be caught up together with them in the clouds, then Brother Bullard would love to meet you at front. And I can say that because I know him well. I guarantee you, Tony and I would love to pray with you. Jan, Wendy, any of us that are on this stage or sit and come with our crew would love to lead you to the Lord. Maybe let's do this.
spend eternity I encourage you to come to the front Tony's going to play what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus if you don't know him as your personal savior right now is the time for you to come meet him It's time for you to turn over a new leaf. You know, we're getting ready to start a new year. It's time for you to get your heart right with the Lord. You know, when you become a Christian, He casts all your sins into the sea of of forgetfulness. He won't remember them. He wants to cleanse you from all your sin. And He wants you to spend an eternity with Him. But the Bible says no sin will enter heaven. So if you don't know where you'd spend eternity, we're going to sing a verse and a chorus. I want you to come to the front. for sending your son to die on a cross for my sins. I confess that I have failed you. 
And I ask that you would come into my heart. Make me a part of your family. If somebody doesn't know you, I hope that they've said that right along with me. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would wrap us in your arms of love this season as we celebrate your birth. And I pray that you would just be with those who are lonely. Comfort those who are mourning. And God, I pray that you would help us to grow in our faith. It's in your most holy name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Brother Bullard, we want to thank you for making us your Christmas tradition. We love that. We love you guys. Tony says we come as strangers and we leave as family, and we mean that. Amen. Y'all stand with me today. Stand with me today. Brother Tony, go ahead and play some more of that. Play some more of that before as we go out of here. It's good to see each of you. We wish you, if you're not here with us, we're going to have some folks that are going to be gone next week. If you're not, uh, we're going to have service next Sunday morning. So if you can make it, make it. I know some of you are going to be gone. Hey, I appreciate it. We got folks. We got folks from Arkansas. Where else? We got folks from everywhere. Philippines. We got Poto, Red Oak, Wilburton, Haleyville, Hartshorn. We got everywhere. Blue Goose, Bokoshi. Do what? Watts. You live in Watts, Oklahoma? I didn't know that. Well, I was just looking here. I was looking at this hat, and there's a purse under it. No, that won't fit me. That won't fit me, but I thought there might be some money in the purse. Hey, it is good to see you in the house of the Lord. Welcome to each of you. Come back and see us. Service 630 in the Fellowship Hall Wednesday night. Go ahead and you are dismissed. Play us out here with something, brother.